Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today to, to hear Mr. Bhushan. Um, I'll just quickly give it over to Deeksha who will uh, introduce Mr. Bhushan to us. Thank you. Hello everyone. I welcome everyone on a second webinar of Young Achievers lecture series. And today we have with us Mr. Abhinav Bhushan who is presently a regional director at International Chambers of Commerce, South Asia. He is an alumnus of Government Law College, Bombay, and went on to pursue LLM from Columbia Law School, specializing in dispute resolution and corporate law, where he was a member of the Columbia International Arbitration Association and a research assistant and earned a certificate in foreign and comparative law. Prior to serving as a director, as the court's first Indian director, he was also the first Indian deputy counsel of the court where he gained first-hand experience working on arbitrations arising out of common law jurisdiction, in particular working with parties from the U United Kingdom, India, Singapore, and other regions of Asia. Additionally, he is the co-chair of ICC Young Arbitrators Forum Asia. Sir, the Alumni Association student wing welcomes you. Thank you so much for coming. You can start. Thank you, uh, Diksha, for that lovely introduction. And uh, first, please allow me to thank the Alumni Association Students Wing to invite me to deliver this uh, rather nostalgic lecture. Also, because I was the sec General Secretary of the Alumni Association's Students Wing in my final year. But also, please allow me to express my gratitude to all of you uh, students of GLC to give me your very precious Sunday evening. Uh, to deliver this lecture, it has been an absolute pleasure to go back in my memory lanes and reminisce my time at the Government Law College and sort of create a fiction of sorts in my head as to how if I was in GLC in 2020, how, uh, how I would have done it today against, of course, the backdrop of not only the changing times and evolving disciplines, but also how the Government Law College as an institution has changed in itself over the years. So I was in college from 2003 to 2008. I was a five year, uh, I did a five years degree. Uh, I don't know if there are students uh, who are from the third, from the three year course, uh, but I hope you are. Um, and I may have a word or two to, to suggest as to what you might want to do differently in college today. So I thought, and I thought if I was in 2020, the three things came to my mind. One, what I would not do today. Two, what perhaps I would do differently as to what I did then. And third, what I would do, uh, which I did not at the time. Uh, but first, I think what is perhaps a key takeaway from my talk today is please enjoy college life to the extent possible. And I did that. I mean, I absolutely did that. And to just to give you a glimpse of what I did in college, I'm going to very quickly start with uh, some of the memories that I have from, from college, uh, where I made the most of it. Uh, you know, we used to have the Delhi study tour, and this is me proudly waving the flag uh, at the border, at the Vaga border. Uh, this was the India's largest democracy and the world welcomes you. This is um, during the Delhi study tour, we met Mr. L.K. Advani. At the time, Mrs. Rao was the principal. I think I was in my fourth year when we first conceptualized uh, the Delhi study tour. This is, of course, uh, Her Highness uh, as elegant as ever, uh, Gayatri Devi. This was Professor Shinde took us at the time. Um, and there you are at the time, the president of India, uh, Her Excellency Pratibhatai Patil. And this was, I think the second one and I, we went with Professor Daswani. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is that what is important is that in 2020, you all should remember college 
in 2040. Uh, like I remember in 2020, what happened in 2003 till 2008. Uh, I think we all get too caught up uh, working early and it's, get to, it's good to get that experience, of course, uh, but it's also important to take part in college activities. A lot of my peers actually only worked and do not even remember college at all. Uh, they have no particular fondness or affection or attachment to the college, uh, which I think is a little bit of a problem, especially if you're from GLC, because, and this is why I say that to everyone who is listening, is no matter what, and no matter where you are in your life, no matter where you will work in your life, the one thing that will never change or people will not forget to ask you is, where did you do a law from? So the name of the government law college will be recorded in your life for posterity. You'd always be a GLCite and you must reckon and be proud of government law college. Of course, no college is perfect and I'm not saying the government law college is perfect, but it's entirely up to you how you are going to be the torch bearer of this majestic, as I call it, institution. And you would probably relate with me because we continue till date to rest on the laurels of our alumni. We do that when we were students and trust me, you will continue to do that when you graduate. Uh, till date, I often find myself citing examples uh, of the great luminaries that have graduated from government law college. And I feel proud of the fact uh, that I sat on the same benches where once these great legal luminaries and minds either received or imparted education. That's the kind of an institution that you all are a part of. But in my particular case, I think I also feel a little bit more proud because I feel that I lived my college life to the brim uh, because I was involved in college at multiple levels. Uh, so unlike several of my friends uh, who were in government law college, I am a first generation lawyer. And I come from a small town called Saharanpur in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, I used to live in a very small hostel room uh, on Sea Road at the government college's hostel. And with me were about 22 other classmates of mine, also hostelites who were with me in my class at GLC. Of course, my hostel experience in itself is a different and an unparalleled experience. But my life pretty much revolved on A road, which college was B road, C road, D road. Uh, and that continues to be a part of my life uh, till date. Uh, for different reasons, of course. It's been 12 years uh, since I graduated now, uh, and I have been fortunate to return to Mumbai on several occasions. And I can't think of even one instance when I have been to Bombay and there is not, and I have not visited the ABCD roads. I'll just go for a stroll. And you know, that just brings back like flashback of so many amazing memories. Uh, and I'll tell you, I'll show you something that we did recently, in fact, you know, and I encourage everybody to do it. Uh, very recently, uh, we, I, I finished my 12 years and there you go. Uh, we celebrated our 10th year anniversary, uh, or sorry, yes, uh, reunion. Uh, and these are all my hostel buddies. And this picture we took in 2018, uh, not too long ago. Uh, and it was really satisfying, really, really very, very satisfying. But I think uh, the question is that a lot has changed, right, since in the last 12 years. But at the same time, and I think that's what I'm going to focus on today, uh, at the same time, not much, not much has changed. I kept thinking, if I was in college today, would my life be materially different? in 2020, and I think the answer is a resounding no, it wouldn't be. I would still do, I think, most of the things that I did, but perhaps with some caution and with some discretion. But on a broader level, I think the way I see college today, not much has changed since my time. 
in fact, if you look at it from one way, it has only become better. How better? There are, of course, more opportunities. You have a better canteen. Uh, our canteen was the previous toilet on the mes on the middle floor, you know, between the ground and the first floor. Uh, now you have an air conditioned auditorium. We didn't have that. Uh, but when it comes to government law college, and I'm sure that you all have heard this analogy before that the government law college is like a buffet, right? So you have everything available to you. There's literally everything on the menu. And trust me, what's on the menu is nothing less than a gourmet three Michelin star food. But nobody's going to come and fetch that food to you. It's completely self-service. And trust me, if a small boy like me from uh, a small town boy, rather, from Saharanpur can pick what suits my palate, I have no doubt that all of you can do that too. Uh, you pick what you like. And you have to be motivated enough to pick what you like. The first thing that I think I would do if I was in college today, number one, is that I would try and manage myself mentally better. Very, very important. And I'm sure that all of you would relate with me. You know, the times we are living in as a law student, life can be tough. You know, amidst the fierce competition, internal, external, the race to get internships, jobs at a law firm, do an LLM, join somebody's chamber, the fire to be a successful lawyer, and above all, if you know, to meet yours, your parents, and everybody around you, their expectations. It's not easy. Uh, and it wasn't easy then either. I would stress, and I would stress more than I should have now. But again, you know, uh, hindsight is a virtue. If I look back now and I think that should I, should have I stressed so much? No, but when you're in the moment, it's easier said than done. And I think perhaps a hack or the way around it is uh, that there is a lot of information that is available today that did not exist at the time. You know, there are opportunities available today uh, that did not exist at the time. And most importantly, there is access to that information that is available today that did not exist at the time. But you all feel anxious. I, I feel anxious. I feel restless. I have no doubt all of you feel anxious and restless too. And therefore, and I cannot stress enough the importance of this, that it is critically important to talk, to say how what you're feeling. It's peer pressure or what people say and, you know, the inability, your ability to filter information and focus on what's important is what is going to keep you mentally sane. Um, because it's very easy to get trapped in anxiety and compare ourselves with others. And we do that at different stages of our lives. I still do that. But, you know, as you grow older, arguably you become wiser. Um, and you could be a very high functioning person or not high functioning person and yet be, you know, anxious or have general uh, anxiety disorder. One thing you'll have to accept that not everyone will be your friend. Uh, not everybody is going to like your guts or appreciate your contribution. Sometimes we just feel lost and I think it's all right to feel lost. Uh, but some of the basic human traits, I think we sometimes do not pay much attention to it. And in the profession of law, it's generally true, but I feel in the profession of law, it's particularly important is humility. You know, uh, you will get far, be humble, be nice to everyone. Uh, and trust me, everything pretty much flows from there. Don't make callous comments about your friends. Don't add to the gossip, it won't help. I would not go as far as to say, speak only upon to on, speak only to improve upon silence. But what I'm really trying to say is that be responsible in the words that come out of your mouth. And how you can really do this is make a mentor. I cannot again stress enough on the importance of making a mentor, whether you're in the first year of law school of the five-year course or in the third year course, make a mentor, find a mentor. It could be someone in college, it could be a senior, it could be a professor, it could be a friend, 
and it's all right to talk. Uh, it's all right to speak to your fears, uh, about your fears to your close friends. And look, again, easier said than done, but please don't be too hard on yourselves. Uh, this time is never gonna come back. And therefore, as much as you have to make the most of it, you also don't have to be too harsh on yourself. As far as I'm concerned, I did find a mentor. It took me some time. Um, and for me, it was actually uh, Professor Daswani. Um, I'll tell you the incident that I had with Professor Daswani. So I was in the law review in the first year. And uh, I will speak about law review uh, in the latter half of the, of the talk. And <clears throat> Professor Daswani asked me to deliver some copies of the law review to a senior's house. I got late. And about uh, that evening, and I told sir, I have delivered the copies at 8 p.m. to the senior's house. But I actually delivered those copies at next, uh, next morning at 10 a.m. And that's fine. And then nothing happened. About six months later, when I was in my second year, Professor Dasmani was uh, reconstituting the committee. So he was, he was interviewing the old ones as to who he wanted to retain and he was interviewing the new ones. So, you know, I very confidently went for the interview and I was convinced that of course I would be in the, in the committee for the second year. And guess what? I wasn't selected. And for the love, love of me, I could not figure out why I was not selected. So finally I mustered some courage when I went back to Professor Daswani and I said, so why didn't you select me? And he said, Abhinav, perhaps you should tell me why I didn't select you. And I had absolutely no idea. I said, sir, I don't know. I did everything. I reviewed all the articles. I came for all the meetings and I did all the work and I thought you really liked me. I said, of course I like you, but remember that book that I, the, the law review copies I had asked you to send? What did you tell me? You told me that you've sent it at 8 p.m., but you hadn't, you did it the next morning. I said, sir, I didn't want to disappoint you. I was going to do it. I got late and I didn't feel like going to the senior's house at like later than 8 p.m. So I did it the very next day, next morning. And he said, and that's fine, Abhinav, but you should have told me this, that, sir, I've gotten late and I can't do this. You lied to me. I said, sir, no, I didn't lie to you. I genuinely wanted to do it that day, but I couldn't. And I did it first thing in the morning next day. And he said, no, uh, all that you had to do is, sir, I couldn't do it today. Could I please do it tomorrow? Or can I do it? I'm going to do it tomorrow. And that's all that was needed. And that was a life lesson for me. You know, it wasn't that I was insincere. It was I thought of doing something the way I wanted to do it. Uh, and all I had to do was to inform, you know, uh, speak to him. But after that, of course, my story with Professor Dasmani was, was dramatic in the sense that I thought he hated me after that, but he didn't. He actually did forgive me. And, uh, and he became a mentor. And, you know, when you become Professor Dasmani's mentor, see what happens. I'll show you. Um, oh, when you become, yes, when Professor Daswani becomes your mentor, my apologies. Uh, see, this is when he was absolutely getting, he wasn't happy with what I was doing at the Law Review. And this is perhaps he was telling me the importance of Law Review. But then I became like really sort of Frank with Professor Daswani. And then when you really become Frank with Professor Daswani, this is what he does. He takes you sailing with him. Yeah, so one second, is... Abhinav. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but I, we can't, we can only see the, we can't see the screen fully, Oops. basically. Yeah, yeah, you need to double click, probably. We... So, let me try one more time. Can you see it now? We can see the Windows Explorer screen. Yeah, now we can see it. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Uh... Okay, so yeah, this was the first picture. This was, uh, he not so happy with what I was doing at the Law Review. Um, this is, he's showing me something about Law Review, but then he actually took me sailing and you can see the date stamp on the picture. This is 19th March, 2017 at 5 p.m. And it was very windy that day, I still remember. Uh, and he actually still date, you know, he continues to be my mentor. Uh, Often I trouble him with my problems in life. In fact, I discussed something with him as recent as two hours ago when I was telling him about a professional problem I recently encountered. So the point I'm trying to tell you is that find your Professor Daswani, find your mentor, but please don't take mine. Uh, 
and you will realize that you know over time you will change your opinions about your friends you will change your opinions about your colleagues who you like today you may not think well of them tomorrow or not appreciate them enough tomorrow and who you may not appreciate enough today you may be the best friends with them tomorrow when you go back you know in the professional life so uh, whilst you're in college be kind you have to be a very good junior but at the same time you also have to be a very good senior uh, first you have to be mentored and then you perhaps have to mentor your juniors um, and during my time i think not enough people had mentors and i think i personally tremendously benefited by having a mentor in my life the other thing um, which was not well managed in my time uh, was the use of social media and the information available i cannot tell you enough how important it is to not get distracted and to actually train your mind to do productive things use social media but don't let social media use you uh if you were to just internally reflect i don't know how much time you spend on the screens of your mobile phones these days try and reduce that screen time and look i am just class of 2008 and technology is at its peak or it's peaking uh but you i'm sure would agree with me that it is very easy to get distracted with the worlds of you know facebook and whatsapps and instagrams linkedin and the likes of tiktoks etc also i am not saying don't have fun don't send a funny meme or a gif to a friend but because it is so easy to get lost in the sea of information that is available on the web uh it is very important to be cautious and how you navigate your time with social media the good news of course is it is all in your control and how you want to filter this information i wish i mean i tried to do that but unfortunately zoom doesn't allow it um i wish i could take a poll and ask all of you how much time you spend on these applications uh how much time you really spend on a whatsapp on a given day and what are you really doing on that whatsapp how much time are you actually calling people and how much time are you texting people i did that for myself actually not to in fact very recently and i realized that i was spending about 2 hours a day on whatsapp and then i sort of did this critical thinking okay what am i doing on 2 hours then i realized okay a lot of people a lot of clients a lot of people that i work with are also on whatsapp so i'm actually also using whatsapp for work and that's fine but you got to be responsible once again on social media uh as a law student and this i think i did not know this i or maybe i knew of this but i know this better today that as a law student you should idly be in a position to take a stand in a witness box as if you are being cross examined for literally everything that you say or any information that you relay i personally have a, a rule i will never ever forward a forward without verifying its content or information if i am forwarding something that means i have done the fact check and if anybody wants to rely on that information i can back it up with proof you have to become reliable in the information that you convey the words that come out of your mouth they cannot be loose your word has to be as solid as an oak and you have to of course be sincere in what you say um the other thing you have to be very responsible with your digital footprint uh as a lawyer what you post today one thing you all know it will never come off it is always there somewhere and this may come back to haunt you later uh you may not realize it now but it will for sure today uh before i interview anyone or if my organization interviews anyone or if i am being interviewed for something uh everybody does a thorough google search on every single social media platform so you don't want to put something you know that you just decided to put you didn't even know why you put it uh you don't want to do that you have to be very responsible on what you put on social media uh and the world that we are living in i mean you know sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad sometimes it's divisive 
uh, you also have to be careful in expressing your political views. Uh, I think as a lawyer, and I read a lot of these debates on Facebook, my friends have, all of us have, uh, I think my personal stand on that is that as a lawyer, your primary and the most important duty is to uphold the Constitution of India. And therefore, you have to be, again, cautious in coming across as overtly right or a staunch fundamentalist. Uh, as a lawyer, you have to strike a balance and do what the Constitution prescribes. That is, uh, that will hold you in good stead, I think, uh, in the times to come. And like I said, uh, the, the silver lining in all of this is that you can always filter that information. The other thing perhaps which I did not take that seriously, but I should have, um, some of the things I did, some of the things I did not are things related to your academic learnings, your moot courts, your committees and your writing. Um, given how government law college operates and we all know how it's peculiar compared to other national law schools. It is absolutely critical to optimize the academic learnings as a student, because in later years, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get the time. Uh, you are lost in the hustle bustle of the profession. And therefore, my sincere advice to all of you is read, read, and read. Read as much as you can. Because you're very also very fortunate, right? We all are now because every single legal development today and in the world, uh, today in India and in the world is reported almost in a real, on a real-time basis. Uh, judgments, articles, debates are all available with a click of a button. Use this opportunity. And now you're all locked down. We all are locked down. Uh, we can either choose to endlessly spend time in playing Ludo and we can still play some Ludo, but also read with what's coming out in the bar and bench or the legally Indias. But just don't read that article. Please also read the judgment. Uh, it is only when you read the judgment can you properly analyze the article. But you would only do that if you love the law or if you like the law. Uh, and then there are two kinds of people, one who like or love the law and the others who don't. And again, I would ask you to introspect which kind of a lawyer you are. Are you the lawyer who is doing law for the, for the sake of it or are you doing law for the love of it? And love may not come in your first year, second year, but, and it's all right. I mean, a lot of people who finish the degree of law don't actually end up practicing law, which is fine. Uh, but I think it is good to introspect if you are going to do the law or are you not going to do the law? Uh, but if you are doing the law, and if you are at the government law college, then in addition to your academic learnings, I'm sure all of you have heard about the moot courts. And I was the secretary general of the moot court associations. I took part in a dozen moot court competitions as a participant, as a speaker. Um, and 12 years fast forward, and let me tell you, like once I graduated from college, I was, I am still a big advocate of mooting. It is important to moot, very important to moot, but at the same time, it is not uh, you know, the end and be all of it. Uh, if you don't wanna moot, don't moot, but there's a big provi proviso there. As long as you are then spending your time doing other things like writing or engaging yourself in the MUNs MUN or in other kinds of debates, that's fine. And then don't do the, the moot courts. But if you're not doing anything and not doing moot courts because you don't think it's useful, then I think that's perhaps foolish. Because look, not, if, not each one of you or all of you are going to be arguing counsels in a court, right? Some will be in-house lawyers, some will be corporate lawyers, some may be teachers, some will pursue their PhDs or do other things. So if mooting is not your thing, it's all right. But again, provided you're doing other things. Uh, but as a mooting standalone, I think it's a very, very useful tool for critical thinking. Uh, thinking on the feet, researching, traveling, the camaraderie that comes with all of it, preparing your memorials. It's a very productive exercise. And at least you should give it a shot at first. I mean, you should at least try it once. Uh, and it's not gonna be easy, nothing is. 
it is always difficult when you do something for the first time. Everything is difficult when you do it for the first time. I mean, I recall getting shivers when I had to deliver my first speech in Marathi at the Marathi moot court competition. Now, this is a boy from Saharanpur. He doesn't know Marathi at all. And you're in Bombay at the government law college. And now you have to give a speech in Marathi before uh, judges of the uh, high court. Uh, it was much tougher than mooting, trust me. But I did it with unflinching confidence anyways. Uh, and I still have a recording of it. And I hear it sometimes, you know. Um, it reminds me of my, my lovely days. Because, look, when opportunities come to you, right, uh, or things that you have to do, they are going to be scary. At every stage of your life, life will present you with an opportunity and it may look scary, but you have to say, say yes to it anyway. Because if you wouldn't take it, then somebody else will take it and perhaps excel at it. And trust me, like in my 12 years of professional career, I can almost say this confidently that the most interesting things often happen when you take that chance and you have faith in yourself. Also, because you're doing law, Right. And a career in law is rarely a descent, or sorry, my apologies, an ascent to the top. It's always zigzag, zigzag, finding your way and getting to the top. The third thing, which I think the government law college specifically lacks in its curriculum, which is writing. None of us at the government law college uh, paid enough attention to the importance of writing. Yeah. Hi, uh, sorry, if you could, uh, yes, thank you. So write, start small, write blogs. You know, they could be 500 words, they could be a thousand words, it doesn't matter. Uh, create your own blog if you have to. I know so many students who do that today. Uh, because not only is it sort of, you know, it takes that bit of an effort to write, it is equally an effort to get it published. And I'm speaking to, you know, Lakshay, I'm speaking to Maithili, I'm speaking to so many people who are writing and they also want to get themselves published. Now, because unfortunately GLC does not train us to write, it is entirely again up to you how you do it. Um, because also remember that written advocacy is perhaps as important, if not more important than oral advocacy. Especially, um, in international arbitration, sometimes uh, that's what I do. There are no hearings sometimes. The entire proceedings is based on documents only. And therefore, what becomes most critical uh, is your written advocacy. Uh, and therefore, it is important for you to get yourself trained in uh, written advocacy. Then the other aspect of your college life is committees and internships. Uh, I was a part of a lot of committees in college. It was very satisfying. And I'm certainly not saying that you must be a part of every committee in college, but it is important, like I said, to get engaged in college activities. Uh, I have my own set of anecdotes. I wasn't, I was not even selected. I was the secretary general of the Moot Court Association in my fourth year, alongside as the secretary general of the Students' Council in my fourth year. But I was not even selected in the Moot Court Association in my first year. I lost the internal elections in my second year when I stood for, I think, treasurer or was it assistant treasurer? But then uh, I won that election in my third year and in my fourth year, I became the unopposed secretary general. Uh, I headed the committee in my fourth year. I lost the college elections of students council in my third year, but then I won in my fourth year. And of course I was sad. I remember sitting uh, alone on Marine Drive, you know, on numerous occasions, uh, something similar to the Shah Rukh Khan story, you know, how he came and stood at the corner of Marine Drive and he decided not to give up. Yes, I mean, you do get sad and I was living on sea road. So the easiest place for me to go and express my sorrow was to the Arabian Ocean, right, uh, right there. Uh, 
the point is that you know we will all go through our challenges we will all go through our challenges but how we are going to deal with it is what matters the most uh, and therefore again it draw it puts me i mean it takes me back to the mental health issue you got to keep this healthy if this is healthy everything is going to be fine uh, the other thing is about that perhaps we did not i did not pay too much attention to is or i did in my own way but i could have done better when i was in glc in 2003 to 2008 is the the relationships and the networking of it all you will hear from everyone that it's important to network do networking but nobody nobody will tell you how to network right uh and unfortunately even i can't tell you how to network but what i can tell you is how not to network uh it is more important i think to know how not to network because if you do everything in the sphere of not networking you'll probably by putting in some effort end up networking fine uh we are living in these in these covid times right uh, where technology is at a surge where the digitization of the world is at a surge and it will continue to be so and perhaps rightly so but but amidst all of this right uh it is equally important to develop relationships uh so han how are you going to do that you actually going to do that by not doing the following things for instance right as a law student what is really important to you uh, especially if you are say a person like me a first generation lawyer from a small town with no legal background and you come to you know the maximum city like bombay uh glitzy you know you have bollywood and you have south bombay and you have this very different sort of a city uh where you have to and you in this hostel with 22 other classmates of yours somebody is from nasik somebody is from jalgaon uh and you know 12 years fast forward my friend from nasik uh, hiren kamod he mean he he's i think is a great intellectual property lawyer my friend from jalgaon although he had a legal background but i think he's personally a great lawyer uh, aniket nikam we were all in hostel together we spent copious amounts of time uh, thinking about life and how, what are we are going to do uh, where do we see ourselves 10 years from now it's all going to be fine is what i'm going trying to say if you just believe in yourself but try not to ask for internships on instagram or on facebook or on linkedin if you don't know the person at all uh do not meet a person at an event or a conference and ask for an internship immediately you meet them for the first time but that also does not mean that you do that at the second time no you don't do that uh perhaps what a good way to do that is that you've met a person you've met a senior partner you've met a senior lawyer uh, you're looking for an internship or an article or a clerkship uh write a professional email say it was lovely meeting you this is who i am this is what i have done this is what i am interested in see what that person has done all that information is available on the internet now see if you like certain aspects or certain things about that person or about that person's work highlight that in your email be very very correct in your writings be grammatically correct small typos uh the way you write the structure or emails again it's all goes back to how you write things they all make a lot of difference i personally i i would like to think i'm a grammar nazi uh it is very important for me uh to structure my sentences read them so many times just to make sure that i don't make a typographical error or my or i don't make a spelling mistake and let me tell you i'm not perfect nobody is the best of us make mistakes and i still do sometimes but as long as you are conscious about it as long as you are consciously looking at your drafts looking at your emails and making them structurally sound you're going to be fine that consciousness has to be there uh and i do judge people when they write to me uh because i am being judged when i write to others it's fair uh so don't write a careless email 
do not copy paste an internship applications. Don't write an application you're sending to Shardul Amarchand Mangal Das, uh, which has Cyril Amarchand Mangal Das in the body of the text. Uh, don't do that. Read your emails. It's very easy to, you know, think, oh, I'm sure I've done all, I've deleted all the references and don't do all that. Read it. Uh, and again, it goes back to your networking, right? I mean, the world is slowly coming to a place and this is for all those people who think that just because you don't come from a legal background, the world is going to be harsh and you will never get an internship or a job for that matter. I am not condemning the fact that, yes, it is perhaps maybe slightly easier, relatively easier to get a job or an internship if you have a legal background, your father or mother is a lawyer or a senior advocate. But, you know, we all coming down to a place where all that matters is merit uh, in the long run, in the very long run. Uh, the world is becoming becoming a place where it is not that easy to just call up somebody and say, hey, my son, give him or her a job. No, it's, I mean, yes, it's still, it may still happen, but it's decreasing. What ultimately counts today is the merit. Uh, and if you stand well, if you do well, uh, if your resume uh, indicates that you've been working hard and you're focused, then yes, you will stand out. It doesn't really matter if you have a legal background or you don't have a legal background. Um, the other thing perhaps which I could have done better in 2020, which I of course could not do in 2003 and four, is the question of LLM. The, you know, this sword, this question that hounds us about LLMs. So what does it mean today to do an LLM for an Indian student in 2020? It's utility, uh, the cost benefit analysis of it all. In particular, what does it mean for a GLC student to do an LLM? And of course, uh, there is no right or wrong answer to it. We at the Government Law College end up having far more practical experience by the time we graduate in our fifth or third year because we've been working. We have that option, we have that privilege rather to intern or to do our articles clerkships uh, whilst we are at the college. The national law school students do not have that privilege, which is why they do their short internships, one month, two month, etc. cetera. Um, so we come out, uh, we graduate from the government law college with a decent amount of practical experience under the belt. Uh, and in the last 15 years, I'm sure all of you know students from the Government Law College who have, you know, gone to every single uh, reputed college in the world for an LLM, be that uh, Harvard, be that Columbia, Yale, Oxford, Stanford, UPenn, Cambridge, LSE, Kings, you name it. Uh, in fact, I was speaking to Maithili a couple of hours ago, she might be attending the the talk. She went to Harvard very, very recently, one I can think of. Uh, so the fundamental difference between doing an LLM then versus doing an LLM now is that back in the days, LLM was the gateway for Indian students or foreign students to get a job after your LLM in a foreign jurisdiction. And I'm sorry to say that's no longer true. There is no guarantee today that if you do an LLM, you will get a job outside of India. And therefore, uh, I am not saying that you shouldn't do an LLM, but I think what I'm suggesting is it is important for you to understand why you want to do an LLM. If you want to do an LLM for an educational experience, yes, you must absolutely do it. And you must not take the opinion of somebody who's not done an LLM. I don't know if anybody will who has done an LLM will tell you not to do an LLM uh, for the simple reason because you know you go you study you do a sort of a comparative analysis with you know different kinds of laws you meet people from different parts of the world they become your friends uh, you network uh, you see a new country you live there you become independent in that sense and then you come back to your home jurisdiction. And that experience in itself is, is very important if, you know, if you'd like to get one. 
but it is not at all important that you must do an LLM. Without that, oh my God, it's not going to really happen. Uh, but at the same time, it is important, and that is where I was getting at with this LLM, that if you're really going to spend, say, a one crore of your parents' money, if, say, if you're doing an LLM in the US at a good school or 50, 60 lakhs at anywhere else in the US, in the UK or in Europe somewhere, then, you know, if you're going to spend that much money, then you might as well do it from a good university. Uh, unless you have too much money and you just want to go for the experience of it, then fine, you can go to, you know, a, a B university or a C university. But if you really want the value of that educational experience, if you really want to make worth your time while you're abroad, you need to get through a good university. And again, like I said, the government law college students have gone on scholarships. They have gained admissions in the top law schools around the world. So the place where you are at today gives you every single avenue option to uh, get yourself admitted. But for that, um, you need to structure your five years or three years at the law school, right? And perhaps this foresight I did not have when I was in PLC in 2003. Um, so I think what I would have done today, and you would see that I would structure my, if I really want to do an LLM, and even if you don't want to do it, it's not a bad idea to structure your life in your first, second, third, fourth, fifth year, etc. cetera. Uh, what you want at the end of the day is a good resume. Now, what is a good resume? Because it's backwards. You have to live like Benjamin Button to get to, to meet the ends. You need say a good job after an LLM, hypothetically say. So you must come from a good university. How do you get through a good university? Uh, you need to have a stellar resume, a good statement of purpose to get through to that university. And how are you going to have a good resume and a good statement of purpose? By actually trying to structure and think critically as to what you're going to do in your law school. One thing I must uh, stress on is that you cannot compromise with uh, your academics. Uh, extracurriculars are great, and I did all of them. I should be the last person to tell not to do extracurriculars. They're as important, but perhaps not as important. But what I'm trying to say is that you cannot do more extracurriculars over academics. Uh, you need your grades to get through a good university. Uh, you need your internships there. Some law schools have uh, the requirement of prior work X. Some don't have the requirement of prior work X. Um, so try different internships, see what really makes your heart warm, see where you are really interested in, because that's the only way perhaps, or perhaps that's one of the more uh, efficient ways of trying to figure out what you like, what subject you like, because you're not going to like every subject, right? I, I No lawyer can claim to like know everything or all subjects with equal interest. So find your subject and you can do that by interning at different places uh, and critically thinking, you know, this introspection is important. Uh, try and do that. Mm. So, and I'll show you, uh, one second, sorry. Okay, sorry. Um, I was going to show you some uh, other nostalgic moments of uh, the government law college. Yeah, mm, I showed you this. Um, making the most of, I'm, I should share this with you. This was uh, the Alumni Association Students Wing of 2008. Uh, I was the General Secretary uh, in my fifth year uh, with Professor Shinde and Professor Masani at the time. And we did great things, you know, look, look at this. Uh, this was all the lectures that happened in college. This was Dr. Abhishek Manu Singhvi. He had come for the MC Chagla lecture series. Uh, this was at the time, Justice Radha Krishnan was a Bombay High Court judge. Mr. Riyas Chagla had not become a judge at the time. 
and Mr. Iqbal Chagla is uh, sitting. This was perhaps the inaugural lecture of the NC Chagla lecture series. Uh, it still happens till date. Mrs. Rao was the principal. And every time before the lecture, we would all the dignitaries would sit in her chamber and uh, so that people, the auditorium gets filled during the time and the, before the lecture starts. This was the guard of honor uh, before the dignitary used to come in. I don't know if that happens now. Uh, this is Mr. Harish Salve. He had also come for a similar lecture in 2000. Sir, I'm sorry. Uh, sir, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Could you please try reopening the photos? It is not fitting the screen. Is it fitting now? Um, no. Okay, so I'll stop share and I'll, I'll go back again. How's it now? No, sir, not happening. Uh, not at all? Not at all. Okay, well, um, I'll try it in a, in a bit again. Okay, um, so apart from that, the other thing that I wanted to quickly touch upon, and I know there are questions, um, is that the last and certainly not the least, you know, uh, the importance of being uh, well-groomed, well-dressed, well-read and working smart. Uh, I remember once I was judging a moot court competition and one of the students, uh, his, the, the knot of his tie was loose. Uh, and he kept arguing and, you know, at some point in time, I sort of made a snarky comment that counsel your arguments are as loose as the knot of your tie. Uh, the point is that uh, dressing well, I think it's not only is a form of good manners, but as a law student, uh, it's important to dress well. But again, I am not saying dress expensive. I'm saying dress well, polish your shoes, no loose knots of ties, ironed clothes, Keep it simple, keep it professional. Uh, you know, I always say that life is not perfect, but uh, your dress or your outfit can be. Uh, also, you know, before you represent your college or before you represent your workplace, you actually represent yourself. And therefore also it is very important to come across as presentable in the professional world. You also gain a lot of confidence if you are, you know, smelling well. I mean, you know, you've not spending unpleasantly is what I mean. Uh, and you are dressed well, I think it gives you, it boosts your confidence. Um, and let me try the share screen one more time and hope that it happens. Okay, tell me, is it happening now? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, so this was Mr. Harish Salve back in 2008. Uh, and at the time, Justice Vazifdar, who you can see standing next to him, uh, was a judge of the Bombay High Court. And then later he became the Chief Justice of the Punjab and Haryana High Court. I think he retired last year. And briefly, we had... Uh, um, uh, this, was, this used to be the Guard of Honor. Uh, before the dignitaries used to come. Can you see this picture with uh, Mr. Riaz Chagla, Mr. Iqbal Chagla, now Justice Riaz Chagla, uh, Abhishek Manu Singhvi, Justice Radha Krishnan sitting in Mrs. Rao's chamber. Can you see this picture? Yes, sir. Uh, and this was the inaugural series of the MC Chagla lecture series. Uh, some of the other things that happened, I'm just trying to take you back in the memory lane uh, with the underlying point being... Um, I showed you the Delhi, Delhi Sari tour. Um, yeah, look at this. Uh, this was the school cricket team, uh, the college cricket team. Uh, this is Professor Shinde, uh, and we had the full- Not uh, open, sir. Sorry? Same error happening again. It's still not fitting the screen. Okay, one more time. How are we doing now? Yeah, it's visible. Okay, so that was uh, um, the cricket team uh, and we played this match in Marine Drive, one of those grounds. Um, sorry. Uh, can you see this? 
Yes, sir. Okay. This was the DM Harish Murkot competition. Again, Justice Radha Krishnan had come at one of the judges. Professor Sanjay Kadam used to be the Murkot Association um, professor comparing during DMH. Uh, so during the Students' Council. So this is, you, you would know Abhinav Chandrachur uh, getting uh, an award during the annual day by at the time, Mr. Chagla, uh, now Justice Chagla. This was, this used to be the Independence Day uh, celebrations. We used to come for flag hoisting in college. The uh, picture is not moving forward. It is still back to the one of uh, cricket team. Uh oh, okay. Okay, last attempt. Can you see it now? No, no sir. sir. It's not fitting the screen now. Surprise. Sir, you must double click the pictures. I did try to double click the pictures. Uh, how about now? No, sir. So okay. if you minimize the window, the pictures must have opened in another window. Is that so? Okay, let me try one last time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So there, yeah, that's Abhinav. Uh, uh, Abhinav and I were in the same class. He was my, he's my batchmate. So this was during uh, 2007, I believe. Uh, he was getting a trophy as he always did um, for one of the many accolades that he had at the time. Uh, this can you see the next picture with the flag hoisting ceremony? Yes, sir. Yes, so every 15th of August, uh, we used to come and uh, hoist the flag. And there was used to be a little ceremony in college. Um, this is how the auditorium used to, you know, we used to set it up. A part of a job was to get the frills, get the tables, you know, and you can see the lovely picture of late Mr. Nani Palkiwala on the left side. Uh, the point, Oh yes, and of course, I'm. I don't know how many of the of the present staff uh, is there in the picture, but uh, that's how the staff. That's Ajit Kaka on the left, actually. Um, the staff used to eat food, and we used to, you know, serve them food, and you know, it was very collegial. It was very happy. The point I'm trying to make with all these pictures is that nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. What used to happen in terms of your access to people, the access to the people who used, the kind of people who used to come to the college, the kind of networking, so to say, you could do at the time in college, that has not changed. And notwithstanding COVID, because this will go away at some point in time in our lives, uh, you are at one of the best law schools, perhaps arguably Asia's oldest law school, um, and you have to make the most of it. I also remember we celebrated the sesquicentennial celebrations of the Government Law College in 2005, I believe, the 150th year celebrations of the college. And my God, that was a sight to see. Uh, there were seven judges of the Supreme, and these were all alumni of the college, six or seven judges of the Supreme Court. There were actors, there were, people from the services, people from uh, the administrative services. Um, there were at the time, uh, the Bombay High Court had so many judges from the Bombay High Court. So many of them were from the Government Law College. The auditorium, and it happened at the Yashwant Rao uh, Hall uh, in, uh, in town. The hall was studded, it was star studded. And at that point in time, you know, I was comparing that event with my friend Smriti and with Professor Daswani. And, you know, I was standing at the stage um, when I started to uh, compare uh, and the president of India, Patibhatai Patil was there, Her Excellency. And, uh, the, and the chief justice was going to be Justice Sabarwal. He was there. And the second in line judge uh, was also who was going to then uh, supersede, uh, sorry, not supersede, uh, get appointed after Justice Sabarwal was also there. Uh, and I was standing there and I was looking at the hall and I was like, my God, this is where I belong. 
in from the college that I'm coming from, all these people studied at the same college that I'm studying at. And again, nothing has changed. In fact, the opportunities that all of you have today are far greater than the opportunities that were available then. Uh, so the long and short of it is that if I was in government law college in 2020 today, I would have been, I would have felt so fortunate and I would have thanked my stars that I am at the government law college because it gives me the opportunity to do whatever it is that I want to do. And therefore it is my humble appeal to all of you, stay focused, find a mentor, structure your college life, think about what you want to do and how you want to do and be grateful for the education that you are getting and the opportunities that you're getting at the government law college. Thank you. So we have a couple of questions and my co-member Rishika Soni would be taking up the questions. Rishika. Sure. Um, so um, the first question that we have is, um, Neil asks, I am a third year uh, law student in the sec I am a three year law student in the second year. Uh, we started a college in September end and COVID affected in March. How to make the most of the remaining time in college? Look, uh... You are, the, you are in the three-year course in the second year. Um, and you've got one year left. Right now, uh, to be very honest, I mean, you are not the, perhaps the only student who is impacted by the virus. All of us are. And what you can do is that the remaining time that you have in college, I understand classes are happening online and I think you should obviously continue to do them. But from the remainder of the time that you have in your hands, please also know that this time will never come back. So this alludes to my earlier point that from the, for the time that you have in college left now, try and learn a new language if you can. Uh, learn Mandarin, French, Spanish, right? Uh, read up as much as possible. You will never get so much free time in your life again. Trust me, you will miss the COVID times, not in the sense you know what I mean? I mean, you'll miss the time that you are, you are spending at home by yourself. You are the master and the creator of the time and how you're going to spend that time. Uh, and therefore, I have the following suggestions. This is what I try to do, try to do. Learn an instrument, you know, learn guitar, learn something, learn a, a new language, uh, do a new a, a, a course, a diploma of sorts. There are so many good specialized courses that you can do, which otherwise may not be possible for you. Uh, try and write something. Uh, I understand this question is from Neri, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, Neri, please write. Uh, try and write as much as you can or as little as you can, but give that attempt. Um, that's so much you can do. I don't know which part of the country you are in, uh, but wherever it is that you are, as long as you have an internet connection, uh, you can do wonders with the time that you have in hand. Um, thank you, sir. So, uh, second question. Uh, Akshay asks, so I'm a first person from my family in the legal field and I literally do not know a single person from this field. I just took a leap of faith that I can be a good lawyer. There are many students like me. Some of them are my friends. What should I do? Uh, for, what should uh, people like me do? That was exactly what my entire lecture was about. Uh, have faith, uh, Akshay. Akshay, you mentioned, right? So have faith, Akshay. Uh, like you, I am also a first generation lawyer. Uh, like you, I also come from a small town. Uh, like you, when I started doing the law, I did not know anybody in the field of law. Uh, but stay focused, stay involved. Because if you're not going to stay involved, you will not get to know anybody in the field of law. It is only when you will meet, interact, do moot courts, write a paper. And of course, COVID will go at some point in time, right? Uh, so, so you have my wishes and uh, tell all your friends, have faith, be focused. Don't waste time on things that I was earlier alluding to. Uh, look at your WhatsApps. And, I mean, spend time on the internet spend time reading things, read judgments, and you'll be fine. 
not every great lawyer in the country uh, came from a, a legal background, right? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, so the third question is, in these present times, uh, how important is the ment mental health aspect for a student? How to take a mind off the what could have been and make peace with the new normal? <laughs> like I said, uh, it is very important. Uh, the mental health issue is a real issue. And uh, how to take your mind off from would have been, should have been, is like, look, you do not have control over everything, but what you do have control over is that it's your own mind, right? It, and it will waver, it will wander, and that's fine. But, you know, you're also privileged in many ways, right? There are a lot of people out there who are not so privileged. Uh, you know, I remember J.K. Rowling in her, was it the Harvard commencement speech said uh, to... And I think what she was alluding to that's the, was that the Harvard graduating class is a privileged class. And what she then said was to the effect, I can't quote her exactly, but that your failure is an average person's success. So, you know, we can obviously be mired down with all kinds of troubles that are happening around us. But look, as long as you're focused, as long as, you know, you're healthy, as long as you're mentally healthy, like I said, you can overcome all these challenges and therefore find a mentor, talk to people. And if you think, meet a professional, see a doctor, there is absolutely no problem to see a doctor if you are feeling not mentally well. Uh, I think somehow people understand this to be a taboo of sorts, but it is not. Um, it is perfectly all right to get counseling if you think you need it, or if somebody close to you suggests that you get counseling. Uh, a lot of my friends have taken counseling and I've helped them take counseling. And I hope if I need counseling one day, I will take counseling. It's okay uh, to take counseling. Uh, don't think there is something seriously wrong with you because you need to professional help. It's perfectly all right to do that. Uh, but, and that, that, that's, that's really my, my, my comment on the question. Uh, so the fourth question is, if you had to change one thing about GLT, what would that be in your opinion? Sorry, if I could change one thing about GLC. Yes. I think, well, it, I don't know right now, in my time, the food could have been a lot better. The library could have been a bit more structured. Uh, we could have had, I could have had Manupatra, LexisNexis and Westlaw access. Uh, we did get Wi-Fi installed in college in 2008. I remember that. I don't know if that's still on, uh, but perhaps better access to technology, better access to journals, books, etc. A bigger library, um, something that I could change today in GLC, and maybe a lot more many professors. Okay. Um, Sir so Mehul asked, uh, can you uh, um, can you please share your views on articles, clerkships, and the solicitor examination? Yes, no, look, the Bombay Incorporated Society, I mean, this exam is uh, very specific to Bombay, right? I mean, it doesn't really, it's not as prevalent in other parts of the country. And a lot of my friends are article clerks, all of them are solicitors. Um, and the solicitor exam is one of the most difficult exams uh, in the country. Um, it's a very personal choice. I personally did not do the solicitor's exam. I chose the LLM route, uh, but if you would like to do the uh, article clerkship route, then yes, do it by all means. I mean, a solicitor is a you know highly respected individual as a law practitioner and has a very important role to play in the field of law. So um, I would not discourage you to do uh, article clerkship, um, but again, it's, it comes down to a personal choice. Okay. Uh, so Ria asks, uh, good evening, sir. How do you suggest getting papers published and choosing where to publish? See, that's a tricky one. And that's a good one at the same time, right? Uh, so as a person who is starting to write from government law college, right? You also have to measure your aspirations, right? I mean, you shouldn't expect to get published in the Harvard Law Review in your first draft. Nor should you think that uh, 
you will not get published anywhere. Uh, there are student run blogs. There are student run journals. No, almost all national universities do that. Jodhpur does it, uh, NUJS does it, the Government Law College does it. Um, and there are student run journals, not just in India, but then outside of India. And then there are these independent journals, which cater to a particular subject, like, you know, there's a journal of international arbitration, there is Kluver arbitration blog, there's Kluver arbitration journal, etc. cetera. Uh, and if you can't get yourself published anywhere, create a blog of your own and publish it. But do not not publish it, put it out there. Thank you, sir. Um Sir Mansi asked, uh, how do we tackle the barrier of communication skills? At times, I'm not able to put forth my ideas confidently, having so much of thoughts and opinions. Sorry, what's the last part? Um, just a second. Uh, she asked, uh, at times, I'm not able to uh, put forth my ideas confidently, having so much of thoughts and opinions. Right. Uh, it comes with practice. Uh, is that Ria who asked this question? No, uh, Mansi. Mansi. Uh, Mansi, all of us at some point in time struggle differently to put. Aditya, could you uh, yourself? Uh, so, we all struggle sometimes to express ourselves. It depends on, um, like even when you're speaking uh, publicly or otherwise, I think some of the things about speaking and communicating is that speak slowly. Uh, it helps you to structure your thoughts. The faster you speak, I think uh, the less effective it is, even for the people who are listening to you. Uh, it's perfectly all right to think, you know, uh, and also, uh, you need a stage. You need a, whether it's the mood court, or, whether it's a mood court, whether it's a debate, whether it's any public performance. Uh, you have to put yourself out there, Mansi. Uh, and it comes over time. You know, um, I struggle sometimes to express myself. Myself, um, but uh, the more you do it, the better it becomes. And if you can't do it yourself, take help. Right. Uh, if it's a general question that, you know, I don't know if your question is specific to, uh, I have troubles in expressing and arguing, or if your question is generally talking to my friends. I mean, my sense is that generally public speaking and communicating is what you are referring to. And for that, uh, you need to take the fear out. You need to put yourself in those difficult positions. Like, you know, like how I gave the example of, you know, speaking in Marathi uh, and, doing my first moot court competition. Um, one of the funny incidences, which is actually not completely mine, but uh, um, in the first moot court, the petitioner, while arguing the case, and we had, I think he had seven minutes. For the first five minutes, uh, he just said everything that the respondent uh, is going to say, and he was the petitioner. And the judge kept listening to him, and he said, Are, uh, what's going on? Um, and then he realized after five minutes that, oh, he said everything that the respondent was going to say. And then he said, uh, oh, my Lordship, what I have said in the last five minutes is exactly what my learned friend is going to say. And that is not the case. So, you know, there are times when you say things you don't understand, you don't realize, you sort of get nervous in the, in the heat of the moment or at the spot, on the spot. It's fine. Um, these are all experiences in life, Mansi, and uh, I wish you all the best. And I hope you put yourself out there. Uh, there are so many mood courts that are happening. There are so many other opportunities for public speaking. Do it. And take help from your seniors or your colleagues and peers. Do it in a team, even better. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, sir, Nidhi asks, um, I'm not able to uh, retain much after reading Bear Act. Uh, how can I? You don't have to remember the bear acts. Uh, there's nobody in the world who remembers all the bear acts from, you know, from start to finish. You have to understand the concept. 
you have to understand what the section purports to state. Even when you are arguing in courts, you have your bare acts, you have your authorities with you. Um, as long as you've understood why that law, what is the intention behind creating that law, what that law or that particular bare act or that uh, section is suggesting, you're fine. You don't have to learn the section verbatim. Nobody has to, Nidhi. I don't know if that was your question because the answer is very, you know, sort of straightforward to that. Uh, but try and understand the concept behind it, right? Laws, I don't want to generalize it, but, you know, a lot of law and how it is made is based on society and common sense, right? If you can find the logic as to why this is needed, then I think life becomes a little simpler. And look, I'm oversimplifying it, obviously, but and I shouldn't, but you don't need to mug up the law. You can, it's fine to read it from the bare text. Okay. Uh, so what advice would you give uh, to a student who wants a career in international arbitration? What steps must he or she take? Uh, <clears throat> focus on the subject, read about it, then perhaps write about it. Then once you do your internships, try and get an internship around it. Do the, the VIZ, the William C. VIZ, International Commercial Moot Court Competition. Uh, then perhaps work professionally at it and do a master's at it. And then you'd be fine. Uh, you need to keep yourself again. If I read a resume today, and you're applying for an international arbitration job. And I see that on your resume, there is nothing that you have done which relates to international arbitration or arbitration versus another person who's applied and has actually pursued opportunities related to arbitration, has done a diploma course, has done an internship, has done a moot court association, a moot court competition or participated in it then obviously I can see that, you know, this person is motivated towards it. So, so <clears throat> do activities around it, you know, uh, and, uh, and that is how you will build a career in international arbitration. It will not certainly happen overnight. Okay. Uh, sir, could you arrange the following activities one can do in law school in order of importance? Uh, mooting, internships, legal writing, debating, and other co uh, curricular. Sorry, you'll have to go slowly. Mooting, internships, number three. Legal writing. Uh, legal writing. Debating. Debating. And other co, uh, and other co curriculars. Other co curriculars. Okay. Um, okay. So look. Um, this is like a chappan bhog, right? Again, you have a thali, which is full of the most yum things in front of you. Um, and you have to select which one you do. Now look, I don't know if everybody finishes a chappan bhog thali, right? So what they end up doing is they end up eating what they like the most. Uh, so really for an all round CV, if you ask me, I would say, in order of priority, I mean, you should do all of them. Uh, mooting, internship, legal writing, debating, and other co-curriculars. I don't know what other co-curriculars are, but at least these three, at least, mooting, internship, and legal writing. I think everybody should have it. And it's difficult to prioritize it because it really depends. It's each to their own. You can do it in your first year, second year, third year, or for a five-year course in the fourth and fifth year, but try and do all of it. And you have the time. You have five years or three years. You can actually do all of it. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, so when should one start delving into writing research papers? Is there uh, an anointed time or one can start whenever one wishes? Yes, one can start whenever. You can start after this lecture. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but look, don't shoot arrows in the dark, right? I mean, there are so many interesting legal developments happening around us, you know, uh, and a lot of it you see on the news um, now and the, and the world that we live in. Pick what piques your interest. 
pick anything, whether it's family law, whether it's criminal law, whether it's commercial law, whether it's bankruptcy law, whether it's intellectual property, whether it's you know uh, competition law, trust law, anything uh, which you find interesting, and write on it. Make a small blog. Pick pick a legal development. Pick a judgment. Write uh, a synopsis of a judgment. You know, start with something as basic as that. You know, uh, sometimes judgments tend to be long. Try creating a, a, a summary of the judgment. Okay. Um, so what is that one important thing which you learned during your journey in the field of law and would you uh, would like to pass on to young budding lawyers? One important thing is uh, I think uh, honesty and professionalism. Uh, you have to be very honest in everything that you do. Uh, your professional integrity has to be at the top. There are no shortcuts is what I have learned. There are absolutely no shortcuts. Uh, there is no overnight sort of a success. You have to go slow, but you have to go sure. I mean, slowly, but surely. And in the process of it, you have to keep your ethics, your um, professional integrity and honesty intact. Okay. Uh, so we'll take three or four more questions and um, we'll then end uh, this session. Uh, so the next question, uh, Arshi asks, uh, hi, sir, could you please suggest what a final year student should do with respect to the hiring prospect now that opportunities have, been, have become fewer and the recruitment is on a temporary yet uh, indefinite hold. What should you do? Look, it's a tough question. Um, and I know, and I can give you a very sort of, you know, let's see answer. But again, you know, everyone is going through this, these difficult times. You're not the only one. I'm not the only one. In all, in different ways, we are experiencing, like I said, the effect of COVID-19 differently. And for the graduating classes of 2020 and perhaps 2021, uh, this is indeed a very challenging year. Uh, and the only thing that I can tell you is that, that just hold on, okay? Uh, it's not easy. Nobody's saying it's easy. Uh, things will open up, things will recover. Having said that, of course, there are opportunities that one can find uh, these are all uh, e-opportunities, so to say, you know, whether it's a digital, whether it's a work from home internship or whether it's any other job internship uh, or a job, everything is happening digitally these days. So keep a lookout, don't give up, keep a lookout. I know people who have uh, secured a job in the last two or three months. Uh, <clears throat> it's not, of course, as much as it, should be or it used to be, but giving up is not going to help because if you're not even there for the little that's available, then you are most certainly not going to get it. Um, so don't lose your morale and just wait it out and keep your eyes and ears uh, on the spot. And as like I answered the first question for the time that you have, the spare time that you have, learn something new, try and learn something new. Get a, get a new skill if you can, because that's possible now. That might eventually even help you with the job, actually. Okay. Uh, so Drasti asks, uh, how, do you um, how did you come to the realization which area of law you want to specialize or pursue further? Again, it's a... You have to keep introspecting, like I said. I, I, you have to try different things. You have to try different internships. And uh, hopefully, and there's no guarantee to it, to the process, but the more you think about it, I think the easier the process gets. Um, different internships, different experiences, see what rocks your boat and what doesn't. 
Okay. That's our last uh, last question. Uh, talking from a CV perspective, how many papers or blog articles uh, do you deem impressive? And ingredients needed to start successful individual practice versus joining corporate, which is better in the long run, individual practice or joining corporate law. Again, there is no straight answer. It really depends on who you are and what you think you can do better. Nobody can uh, give you that answer to that question. And I always, you know, question this norm of. Uh, scope you know a lot of students ask me ki scope kis mein hai uh, there is nothing known as scope kis mein hai scope us mein hai jis mein aap acche ho right uh, whether again whether it's family law whether it's criminal law commercial law if you are good at what you do there is more than much scope in it right you have to find what interests you and if you can find that It's like one of those classic three idiot things, right? I mean, uh, you know, you be happy in what you are doing. If you're interested in what you're doing, then uh, you know, success jhak mar ke bichhe aegi types. So uh, the point I'm trying to make is that don't fall for this. Uh, what is good corporate law, etc. Think what you like. What what goes makes you sleepless at night? What keeps you up thinking about it at night? what area of law what subject of law also like anirudh spoke and i heard a bit of his lecture uh, he spoke about uh, an independent council being an independent council that had that comes with its own sets of you know opportunities and challenges uh, so you have to take do that risk analysis cost benefit analysis at the same time uh, so the answer is not unfortunately that straightforward but again it boils down to what does your heart beat for okay um so that is all thank you so much for clearing um all the queries i request prishni to give the vote of thanks i would like to express a very sincere thanks to mr bhushan on behalf of the alumni committee for this insightful session and for clearing all our doubts and sharing his experiences in glc with us this could not have been possible without of the professor in charge masani ma'am and conveners and senior support also i would like to thank the junior core for staying in touch and helping out and a final thank you to everyone who attended for being a patient and interactive audience thank you so much thank you um, it was a pleasure thank you very much thank you sir thank you so much thank you sir thank you